uh, do want to welcome back first. We have Dan Perkins is back with us. We always love uh, to talk to Dan. He's an Islamic historian, a terrorism analyst, a contributor at thehill.com. Also, uh, his books, uh, The Brotherhood of the Red Nile Trilogy, check those out at Amazon. Dan, how are you, sir? Good morning, sir. I was fine. Thank you. And yourself? I'm doing well this morning. Now, you know, we're a morning show, and so things on Friday, it's after we got off the air on Friday, that's when everything kind of blew up with this uh, whistleblower story. I mean, that we mentioned it, I think, maybe briefly on Friday now that I'm thinking about it, but then it just kind of, the story started to change. It, the initial bombshell that was put out there that the Democrats were so happy, it, it seemed once we kind of read into the details it wasn't what they initially reported. No shocker there. What was your what What are your thoughts on this? The evolution of this whistleblower story with the Ukraine. Well, I, th I think it's a it's a fascinating story in the sense that what we have is the admission by an unnamed person, at least at the moment, who said that they were spying on the president of the United States, and um, the Democrats don't seem to think that there's a problem with that. Uh, I think there's a serious problem with that, that uh, unbeknownst to the President of the United States, that that people who are under his responsibility, that meaning that they, they report to him either directly or indirectly, took it upon themselves to listen in to a conversation with the President of the United States, and then decided they were going to release a comment that they didn't say who the person was or what the conversation was about. But uh, it should scare the bejesus out of all of us that, that if, if the intelligence agencies are listening to the president's phone calls, what are they doing with ours? Well, so that's it's interesting. So uh, one of the reports that I had read, or have read say that this guy this whistleblower actually didn't listen or read anything that he found this out via other means or or un, it was not related to work the content of this call so uh have you have you heard that same thing as well which i thought was interesting where you know the the press runs with a story that the whistleblower did this but the whistleblower really only heard this from a third party well, uh, I have to tell you that I have not heard that he didn't hear it. Um, um, okay. And what what concerns me about that statement is that the inspector general, uh, who said there seems to be credibility uh, based on what he heard from the whistleblower, um, I would think that you know third party conversations shouldn't necessarily rise to the level of public pronouncement by the inspector general but yeah uh, understand understand that, that that i have written uh and i'm not the only one but i have written the 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 number of people in the deep state who are against the president who are still in the in the administration working against the president of the united states mm -hmm. and that's one of the messages here is that is that they have decided there's still people there who want to get rid of president trump and um uh, as far as I can tell, there isn't any law that was broken or anything that the president did that was wrong uh, by making a phone call uh, to suggest that a foreign government look into the activities of an American citizen who may have entered into a corrupt uh, transaction with his country. Well, yeah, if anything, uh, he's trying to repair a relationship uh, that, that may be damaged with another country. It's actually an act of diplomacy. Almost saying, "Hey, mm -hmm. sorry that uh, you know some of our leaders in the past from America have interfered." You know, what can you tell us about that? Maybe you you work with Rudy Giuliani, and I actually think the administration's been very artful this weekend in flipping this on the Democrats. Um, you have mm -hmm. you have the media. <laughs> I was just on the way in. The media references the potential corruption. Uh, in the Ukraine with Joe Biden and his son Hunter Biden and firing the prosecutor by withholding the billion dollars. I mean, a, a specific quid pro quo. But they say, they said today on Westwood One News, there is no evidence of Biden being involved. And I'm like, what do you mean there's no evidence? The man is on film 
uh, right. a videotape of it. I mean, anyway, so what do you think about how the White House has handled this and has flipped this on the Democrats? I, I, I well, it, 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 it's, um, um, they're getting very good at it. The, the Democrats are giving them a lot. I mean, the, get, the Democrats are saying that this is, quote, another impeachable offense. There's no obstruction of justice here. He didn't break the law. He did his job, as you pointed out, uh, from a diplomacy. But they're always looking looking for the next smoking gun to try and figure out. And, and they have a wonderful track record of winding up shooting themselves in the foot or some other part of their body uh, because they try to twist stuff. And uh, they're not very successful at it. And, you know, I think the American people are reaching a point of frustration and disappointment. The president, uh, according to Drudge over the weekend, approval rating is at 52%. They're not getting the effect that they were looking for. It's going the other way. Yeah, no, and I think they're they're making the American people angry. Okay, now let me let me ask you this because this is a kind of a combination of issues here. So, former Secret mm-hmm. Service agent, also uh, you know contributor. I think he's got his own show, Dan Bongino. Okay, he tw- right. he tweeted this, and I these three tweets I think were very interesting. He said, "This is one of those moments that could change everything." The absolutely corrupt media, in conjunction with their liberal pals and deep state chums, are in a panic. They know that the Inspector General report is going to expose massive Obama administration foreign collusion with Ukraine and Russia. They're also panicking over Joe Biden's actions in Ukraine to block the investigation into his son's questionable business activities. The latest anti-Trump intel leak about the promise to a foreign government is clearly an effort to intimidate Trump into backing away. It's time to give these corrupt anti-Trump lunatics the double-barreled middle finger and to double down on making sure these corruptocrats see justice. The Trump administration must not fall into this intimidation trap. They must plow through and expose these people. So, Dan, I thought that was pretty interesting that Dan Bongino is saying that they are essentially trying to make the president look like he's corrupt with the Ukraine because they know there's a bunch of stuff about to come out on them with 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 a mountain of evidence about what the Obamas and Clintons and the Bidens did in Ukraine. I I, I agree with what Dan is saying. I, I think it's 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 I I have to tell you when I first saw this is a long time ago. When I first saw the video of Joe Biden telling the people in the leadership in the Ukraine, either you fire this prosecutor or you don't get the billion dollars. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, <laughs> as you pointed out, that's, a, that's very dama- damaging evidence uh, of the, of the sit- then sitting vice president of the United States trying to intimidate and blackmail a foreign government drop an investigation uh, into into his son's activities and um you know the, this are we going to do the same thing in china with china where yeah. he got an even bigger deal in yeah. china um so uh um, let me stop you right there uh, uh, once again about we're talking with dan uh dan perkins uh i have this clip Let, let's just for the audience let's go ahead and play biden uh at the council on foreign relations uh talking about uh, how he put pressure uh, to get the prosecutor fired that was investigating a company where his son was on the board. Listen. I had gotten a commitment from Poroshenko. They would take action against the state prosecutor, and they didn't. I said, I'm telling you, you're not getting a billion dollars. I said, you're not getting a billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, well, son of a bitch. <laughs> got fired. And they put in place someone who was solid. At All the right, time. stop. Well, just so ha- that's from a uh, 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 RT report. Anyway, Dan, I mean, I mean, and, and and he he's that's not the only time he ever referenced this. I mean, he's referenced this multiple times. Um, mm-hmm. So there clearly is evidence that you know th- th- that he got somebody fired who was investigating the company that his son was a board member on. Um, that's true, but there's another part of the story which is not getting a lot of play. And that is, what was the role of this Ukrainian operation in uh, support of the Hillary campaign and how they provided information on Paul Manafort uh, so that, that it goes beyond Biden? Where, and, and, and here's the unspoken word. 
all of these things are starting to come out. And these things are being said. And at some point in time, somebody's going to start asking this question. What did the president know? When did he know it? And what did he do about it? And we're talking about not Donald Trump, Barack Obama. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I mean, it, it certainly is um, to watch the media do what they're doing time and time again. It's mm-hmm. it's one it's one lie after another. I mean, uh, they they just will not let it go. Um, they they want this man out of office, and and they're willing to do anything. You know, they're willing to misrepresent a story or um, you know not cover. It. I mean, they're kind of sort of having to at least mention that there are allegations against Biden now, uh, but they're now saying that there's no evidence. And I'm like, well, how do you say there's no evidence, Dan, when you have videos out there like we just saw? Yeah. Let me, if I might, uh, make a, a comparison for you. Yep. Um, there's a provision of the Muslim law, the Quran, called Takiya, and it, it, it dictates to the Muslim how they must behave when they're talking and dealing with Muslims and how they deal with infidels, the rest of us. And under that proportion of Takiyah, it allows them to lie, cheat, steal, misrepresent, not tell the truth, whatever they want to do, whatever they want to do to achieve their objectives. That's exactly what the Democrats are doing. They're actually complying with Sharia law <laughs> and the Koran. And and they make all these, these wild accusations and when they're challenged, challenge them, they, they don't know what anybody's talking about. They go move on to something else. And so what I think is going on is that the Democrat Party has converted to the Muslim religion <laughs> and are, no, I, are following Takiyah. I, I take your point. I'm familiar with Takiyah. That does appear to be what they're doing. I mean, in terms of practically, mm-hmm. it's a very, very, uh, you know, good comparison. And then, you, then of mm-hmm. course, you have the effect. We have half of the, not half of the country, but you have a lot of people out there who they still trust uh, the media as, as an arbiter of truth. And so they have a completely different understanding of, uh, of, of reality. And that's what's sad to me, how many people are being deceived right now by the media. When the, when the media makes a mistake and they print a story, the retraction of it, Story when they've made a mistake is about one tenth of the space and coverage of the initial lie. Mm-hmm. So people hear the story, but they don't really see when the media retracts their story. And um, I'm actually working on a piece right now, which I think will be somewhat controversial. And that is maybe the New York Times, maybe it's time based on the way that the New York Times is acting, the New York Times needs to become registered as a lobbyist in the United States government. (laughs) You're right. You're right about that. Uh, There's no doubt. Hey, uh, Dan, uh, it's always great to have you on the show. We really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for kind of breaking this down for us. And uh, we'll do it again soon, okay? Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. Take care. Yes, sir. Dan Perkins.